Well, I worry that over the past few weeks, the government has looked like uh, libertarian jih jihadists and, and treated the whole country as uh, kind of laboratory mice in which to carry out kind of ultra, ultra free market experiments. And this is not where the where the country is. There's been one horror story after another. It's not just about tax cuts for the rich, but about benefit cuts, cuts to public services. Uh, even today, we're reading that they may uh, impose charges on long-term sick and disabled for, or who are parking at hospitals. And this is not what the, what the public wants. And I really believe that the Prime Minister given everything that has gone on, needs to set out, to do a fireside chat to the British people, apologise for what has gone on and set out a vision for compassionate conservatism with social justice at its heart. So you think the Prime Minister needs to apologise personally? Do you know, um, yesterday in my constituency, one person after another expressed a dismay, but um, one or two people actually said to me that they were frightened frightened about everything that had gone on, worried about their uh, payments, worried about their mortgages, worried about their uh, small small business. And I don't want a government where, uh, where people come up to me in the street and saying they're frightened about, this isn't about the opinion polls, this is about uh, we're in danger of creating a, after the COVID pandemic, an economic pandemic, unless things aren't sorted out uh, re really, really soon. We, you know, the country wants affordable housing. They need to, uh, public spending to be maintained on essential services, like my area of education, uh, for example. They want tax cuts, but focused on the lower paid and those who are struggling the most. The, the government should recast the energy package, which, whilst I welcomed it, of course, it was a huge intervention, it should be focused predominantly on the poor and those who are wealthy and big business should not be getting uh, uh, rebates as currently set out. Um, you are obviously someone who's always, you know, as, as we said in the introduction, you know, championed uh, the values of blue collar workers, you know, not the super rich, people who work hard to earn, you know, a moderate salary, people like places like Harlow, where you represent. Do they think that the Prime Minister is on their side? Or do you think what has happened is effectively playing into people's concerns that the Conservatives always just look after the rich? Well, the awful stereotypes of Conservatives in the past, that we were just the party for the well-off and, and the rich, the government over the past few weeks have played into that uh, stereotype every day of the week. And uh, as I say, said to you, the biggest problem for me is not that my constituents are angry at the government, but some of them are actually frightened because they fear for what has 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 gone on, and this can't can't continue. And I welcome what uh, Jeremy Hunt was saying uh, yesterday in the media, um, but the proof of the pudding will be in the in the eating. There have to be dramatic improvements and pretty quickly. You say you welcome some of what uh, the new Chancellor uh, said, but Jeremy Hunt also said that spending needs to be looked at efficiencies need to be found. Now, you are someone who's always talked about the values of public services, particularly, of course, in education, where you have a, a particular interest. Are you concerned that we might be seeing a return to austerity? Well, to be fair, when we had austerity under George Osborne and uh, David Cameron, they managed to protect some of the core budgets. They cut taxes for uh, lower earners. They introduced the living wage. Uh, they created millions of apprenticeships. They reformed uh, welfare. They were able to do all this, uh, even though there was austerity, because they got the deficit under control. So it can be done. Of course, there have to be efficiencies, but we absolutely cannot cut public services in the core areas. I mean, just to look at education, over between 2010 and 2025, it will only have had a 3% increase in real in real terms. Our kids have suffered massively because of school closures during lockdown. There has to be more investment in education. And if the government is saying they can increase defence spending, uh, they can hardly say, well, no, we haven't got any money for uh, uh, essential services like uh, funding our schools and colleges properly.
Now, we're talking about the new Chancellor here. There are reports uh, in the uh, papers this morning uh, that Number 10 originally approached Sajid Javid uh, to see if he would be interested uh, in being Chancellor. Now, he's one of your closest allies in the House of Commons. You went to university uh, together, your friends there, you helped run his leadership campaign. Is it true that he was sounded out for that job? I have no idea. I'm not a kind of party to those discussions. They're way above my pay grade, but uh, I'm dismayed to read in the newspapers uh, the briefings that have come out um, using four-letter words to describe Sajid Javid. I've known him, as you say, since university. He's a really good man. He was respected. He didn't tank the economy when he was a chancellor. And if the uh, prime minister wants to unite the party and get people around her, uh, then these kind of negative briefings about colleagues have got to, have got to stop. I just want to read the quote that you allude to there, just so people know what we're talking about. I am going to edit my language because it is Sunday morning. Uh, this is a Sunday Times quote from a number 10 source um, when it was put to the Prime Minister that she'd sad, sounded out Sajid Javid. The Prime Minister laughed out loud at the suggestion. She sat in the Cabinet with Javid for 10 years and she knows who is good and who is the four-letter word that you're referring to. Is that briefing helpful? It's disgusting. Uh, Sajid Javid is a respected and good and decent uh, man. He's had uh, a number of offices, a Secretary of State, uh, and just to uh, uh, call colleagues four-letter words, all it does is uh, uh, bring disharmony to the party when what uh, the Prime Minister should be doing is doing everything possible to bring people together, bring the country, uh, country together. It's just absolutely unnecessary and uncalled for. What do you think it says about the current number 10 operation? Well, if they're doing things like this and given the events of the last few weeks, clearly there have to be, have to be changes. Um, but, it, you know, at the end of the day, this is about the government. You, 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 they've, uh, they've got rid of one uh, uh, chancellor. Um, the, the, the prime minister needs to absolutely, as I say, say sorry to the British people set out a vision of compassionate conservatism, support workers' conservatism, as every Prime Minister has done since 2010, including uh, Boris Johnson when he launched the Leveling Up uh, programme, and unify, unify the party. Now, I want to ask this question um, because you, in some ways, are at the sharp end of what the appalling polls for the Conservative Party really mean. You know, you represent... Harlow. Uh, it's always been a bit of a bellwether seat. You took it in 2010. You've been kind of consolidating uh, Conservative support in that seat ever since. But, you know, if you look at the current polls, it's game over for the Conservatives in places like Harlow, uh, isn't it? Well, and you look at all the polling done by uh, Matthew Goodwin, who's, you know, not from the left, very respected, has been advising Tory uh, prime ministers and Tory, senior Tory party members for a long time. He's shown that in the so-called red wall seats and working class seats like mine in Harlow that, that we are hemorrhaging in the, in the polls. And that's what I was trying to say to the prime minister. The public want a compassionate conservative uh, government. Um, they're not uh, asking for libertarianism. They want fairness. They want us spending on essential public services. They all do want sound money as well. And I mentioned that during the Cameron years, uh, the government were able to do, uh, to actually do both. And that's why things need to change, and pretty quickly. Do things need to change at the top? Do you think Liz Truss should lead the Conservatives into the next election? Well, at this time, I'm not calling for the uh, Prime Minister to go. I worry about further political instability, but e even more economic instability. Uh, but things have to improve. I, I think she needs to set out some of the things that I've been uh, suggesting. The government as a whole need to show that they are a compassionate, conservative government. Uh, because if things uh, don't uh, change, then maybe... We, you know, the, the thing, I, I just think that perhaps things may not be able to carry on in the way that they have been. I mean, there's talk in the papers about MPs looking to install a unity candidate to replace her, Rishi Sunak, Ben Wallace, Penny Morden, all names mentioned. Are those conversations seriously happening? Well, of course, um, colleagues are, are unhappy with what is going on. We've hemorrhaged in the opinion polls. 
uh, the public just can't understand what has happened. Um, you know, as I said, many of them are frightened about their their uh, futures and their the cost of of living. It's inevitable that colleagues are just uh, we're all talking to see what can be what can be done about it, and that's why I hope very much in the next few days uh, the government has a dramatic reset, apologises for what has gone on, and and becomes the concerted, compassionate government that the public voted for in 2019 and implements the Conservative manifesto that the public voted for in 2019. You're talking there about the next few days. I mean, is that the kind of time frame that we're really talking about for the Prime Minister to do something differently and turn things around, in your view? It's got to be a dramatic change and pretty quickly and uh, to stabilise the economy, to reassure the uh, the public and to reset the government.